Scientists at the University of Leicester say they've established beyond doubt that the skeleton excavated in the city in 2012 is that of King Richard III, killed, of course, at the Battle of Bosworth in 1485. But their analysis of the skeleton's DNA has thrown up a surprise. Evidence of apparently infidelity in his family tree, which raises quite intriguing questions about whether subsequent queen, kings and queens have a legitimate claim to the throne. Joining me now is Dr. Turi King from the Department of Genetics at the University of Leicester, who led the research. Dr. King, first of all, tell us, how, how did this detective work proceed? How did you do this? Right, well, I mean, the first thing to do was we were interested in looking at female line relatives of Richard III, and that's because we were interested in looking at a piece of DNA known as mitochondrial DNA, which is just inherited down through the female line. So we knew about one of these relatives through the work of John Ash Downhill, that was Michael Ibsen, and then Professor Kevin Schur at the university traced a second individual. And so this was fantastic. We had two living female line relatives of Richard III, and I could look at their mitochondrial DNA and see if it matched the skeletal remains, and it did. And then the other bit of, it, of work that I was interested in doing, just because I've been working on the Y chromosome for getting on for 20 years now, was looking at the male line, because the Y chromosome is a piece of DNA which is just passed down through the male line from father to son. So if I can find people who are related through the male line, ideally you would expect that they would share an identical or near identical Y chromosome type to Richard. Now, we knew at the outset, and I know this from my previous research, that, uh, that false paternity events can, can occur. So this is where the father, the biological father, is not necessarily the recorded father. So you get a break in the Y chromosome link. So we knew going into this project this was perfectly possibly likely to happen. I mean, it's about a 16% chance, even if you use quite a conservative false paternity rate. So when we found this, I really was not at all surprised. In fact, we found two in the tree. So we have five living relatives who are descended from the fifth Duke of Beaufort, Henry Somerset. Four of those match, one doesn't, which shows that there's been a false paternity somewhere in, in his family tree. Again, not completely unexpected. And then there is this break in the Y chromosome between these four and the skeletal remains. As I say, this wasn't particularly surprising, but, but what we've done is we've said, well, we don't know where this break in, in the chain is at all, but it's just interesting to speculate if it happened in particular parts of the chain, it might have consequences for historical lines of succession. But we really have to stress, we don't know where this break is, is there, at all. Is there any way of finding that out? Because as you put it, the, the false paternity events so are the, the kind of stuff of English romantic fiction about who did what to kings and queens for years. So is there anything <laughs> else that you can do to fill in that part of the puzzle? What actually happened in these false paternity events? Well, it would be a case of tracing other male line relatives if you want to go for the living relative roots. And, and actually, Professor Kevin Schur has been working on that and has traced a number of, of male line relatives, but none living down to the present day that, that uh, we've approached just yet. Um, but obviously, the other way to do it would be to um, excavate, exhume remains. But obviously, there's a huge number of issues in, involved with that, including um, ethical approval, permission. I mean, it's not a very straightforward piece of work and to do, but it certainly would be an know. interesting one I mean, to be able to do. Perhaps nosy journalists like me want to know, but perhaps it's useful just to keep all this buried. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, it, as Kevin Schur says, we've, we've closed one door. We know that this is Richard III, and it's just opened another possible mystery. And, of course, it might be interesting to go and have a, a look at it, but I don't think it's really necessary to do so. Okay, Dr. King, thanks very much. Dr. Turi King there.